Waikiki Gakasa, Waikiki for the ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Media Watch. I'm your host, Dr. Savvy. And every week we try and find some fantastic guests, and this week is, without exception, a brilliant guest that I've got. Actually, they're all brilliant, and uh, we really appreciate the time that they put forward to come along and share with us their, I guess, inspiration. And also, although this show is really about media and watching the media and looking at the stories, uh, this week we thought we'd have a, a bit of a special. So I'm really, really pleased to welcome Jogishwar Singh, Dr. Jogishwar Singh. Welcome to the show. Why you Khalsa? Why you there? So what I thought we'd do is we'd actually discuss um, a little bit about your background, right, what you're actually doing. Now, I know, you're going to correct me if I'm wrong, that you are a senior uh, director, managing director, I should say, at an international um, banking organisation based in uh, Switzerland? I would say a financial group, a, okay. an extremely well-known family-owned international financial group in Switzerland. Fantastic. So it's an honour to have you here at the show and really wanted to talk about your background, really. Um, how did you get into this career? Uh, and, you, you know, you, you were educated. I think you, we were talking before, uh, you're, a, a very, uh, you're an honours in uh, physics uh, and then you move into this kind of international banking sector. How did you do that? Well, it's a long story. I'll try and sum it up as quickly as I can. Uh, I was born in India. I did my schooling in India, went to university. As I was mentioning to you, I got an honors degree in uh, physics with nuclear physics as my specialization. Then uh, my father was uh, in the, one of the agencies of the United Nations, so I had the chance to go abroad. I, d I have an MPhil from the Sorbonne in Paris. And then I ended up with a doctorate in economic history from Heidelberg University in Germany. So my father, having been in the UN, you know, we, we were a pretty international household. So, and I had the good fortune of having parents who, who were models for us to follow, my mother and my father. My mother, in fact, is a graduate from the 1930s in Punjab when it was extremely rare for women to get educated. So... I, I had a professional career in India before moving to Europe and uh, I ended up in banking because being international, having certain specific knowledge about you know countries like India or other places, uh, there was a scope for me within the financial world in Switzerland. And uh, a message I would like to convey and I'd like to re or, or really start with that. I want every Sikh family to send at least one son or daughter into finance and one son or daughter into uh, the media. The, the, this is very important. So once I, I, it was difficult in the beginning because my professional experience in India didn't correspond to anything in the Swiss context. I mean, I was an IAS officer in India, you know, which is a completely colonial system. And it didn't match to anything in the Swiss system. Switzerland been independent for more than 700 years. So I got into banking by accident, but I fitted in very nicely because I combined a sort of a, a range of knowledge, which is more and more required in the banking world these days. It's quite interesting. Uh, mentioned the, the Swiss connection. You consider your, yourself to be Swiss, right? Absolutely. My well, I'm married to a Swiss lady, but that it's not because of that. I consider myself completely Swiss because. Switzerland gave me a chance to build a second life. I, I left India, moved to Switzerland. It's, Switzerland for me is one of the most interesting and successful experiments. And, in and a very beautiful country as well. Well, it is a beautiful country, yes. But what is special about Switzerland, and some people probably don't know about it, Switzerland is a nation created around an idea. Right? We have Italian speakers, French speakers, German speakers. You have three different cultures coexisting harmoniously together, which is an example these days in the world when we see the rise of intolerance in so many parts of the world. So Switzerland's been good to me. I am a, not only a Swiss citizen, I am a very proud Swiss citizen because I realize the value of what Switzerland represents. You mentioned the kind of, I, I call it negative elements, you know, and I, I touched on it earlier on. If you go to Anne Frank House in Amsterdam, you'll see certain politicians being portrayed to say never again, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, the, 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 the terrible aspects of the, the Nazism. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it seeks haven't. It's not just like the last few years that Sikhs have been in Europe, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, 90,000 troops came over uh, during the World Wars uh, to fight for freedom. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Europe is, is not a new destination. Mm -hmm. um, I, I find it quite interesting uh, that, you know, you mentioned um, the identity piece. Do you, think that's in, do you think it's important to you? 
It is, it is. But you know, we have several identities at the same time. We are not a single identity person. I mean, if you take my case, in the order I would go, I am a Swiss Sikh. I'm Swiss, I'm a Swiss citizen, I'm a Sikh. I am a European because Switzerland is in Europe and our economies are very closely interlinked to the European economies. I am an Asian as well. I was born and raised in Asia. I was born and raised in India, so there is an Indian connection. And then I was born and raised in the Punjab, so there is a Punjab connection. Your kids are born in Switzerland, right? My kids, well, my younger son is born in Heidelberg in Germany. My elder son is born in Switzerland. And, and do they feel um, uh, Swiss and do they feel the kind of best of both worlds? Absolutely. Both, both my children, they're perfectly integrated. You know, they, I mean, uh, there is a certain unfortunate part, which is that the India connection has been more or less uh, diluted there because they are fully Swiss. They, they grew up. We purposely did not send them to private schools. This was a long discussion between my wife and myself. I, with my Indian, uh, I would say, <laughs> context, I wanted to send them to a very exclusive private schools, even paying a fortune for that, because that's what we generally do out there. But my wife said, no, they should go to the public school system in Switzerland, which is not only very good, but where they will get to know the real world because they will be interacting with people from all different strata, social strata, different uh, classes of society. And I assume they're multilingual as well, aren't they? Uh, well, they are trilingual, or both of them, yes. Wow, German, amazing. French and English, yes. Um, so let's, let's talk about your, your work, right, that you do. May I just interrupt? Sure, I'm talking sure. of multilingual. Mm. Uh, well, I speak 10 languages. Wow. And this is another message I would like to convey to all the Sikh youngsters, or even not youngsters. I'm not young, but I would still like to learn Chinese, you know, if I can, if I have That's one that you've got missing off your list. It's yeah. missing. Uh, Mandarin is missing. Uh, I think we should learn as many languages as we can, especially the languages of the countries and the areas we are living in. That's a very crucial element for, well, the word for lack of a better word, would be integration. Integration doesn't mean abandoning or losing your mm. identity, as you can see looking at me. But unless we know the language, we cannot put things in the cultural context, right? So we should learn, we should train our children to be multilingual. Yeah, I think um, the UK tends to not do so well in terms of... Um you know, different languages. Although I think it's changed in recent years where there's more French and English being taught in school, oh, yes. but it's more optional. So, how do you balance your very senior role and quite a responsible role with your family life? We touched on our family briefly. Yes. It's a bit of a balancing trick yes. there, isn't well, it? Well, I've had the good fortune of having a wife who has been <laughs> extremely supportive. Uh, very minor things like, you know, I have to travel a lot. And since I'm looking after Asia, uh, my travels tend to be a bit long. You can't make short journeys. London is easy. You know, we came yesterday. We're going to go back today. She's been very supportive. Uh, we still, you know, we, we get together with my children. We, we have family gatherings. Uh, that has sustained me a lot. As you know, in the financial world these days, there's a lot of turbulence. And also, it wasn't easy in the beginning when I came uh, to Switzerland in 1984. Uh, we won't go into that, what was happening in 1984 in India, but, you know, I came in a fairly disturbed state of mind. Um, and her support, her family's support, sustained me, allowed me to develop confidence in Switzerland, get into the position I am in. And, uh, but it's something we have to nurture, you know, we can't take it for granted. That's a good point, actually. So yeah. I've learned to listen to my sons. Yeah. I've never tried to sort of impose my views on them. The important point I've tried to do, at least in my life, is to serve as an example by not being too hypocritical. Because, you know, children are very quick to support, uh, to, to spot hypocrisy. If I were a heavy smoker, for example, and I would tell my children, don't smoke, it's bad for your health, the hypocrisy is evident. So I try and set an example. And there, we were talking about identity. My Sikh identity comes in, you know, being conscious of my Sikh identity. I would not do certain things which I think, because of my visual appearance, would brand people would say, Sikhs are like that, if I were to do something silly. So, unfortunately, then the media are pretty quick to uh, put yeah. up negative images, aren't they? That's right. Uh, whereas, and, it, and I was actually talking to um, 
uh, a few people about this the other day in terms of if you look at um, the, the, the Sikh history as well mm. as even modern day history, mm. you know, Sikhs have been very prominent in terms of you know um, doing a lot of humanitarian work, mm -hmm. you know, fighting for injustice, uh, you know, against injustices, mm -hmm. uh, fighting uh, for the defenceless, you mm -hmm. know, uh, and, mm -hmm. and, and that still continues. Mm. But it isn't. Uh, Visible in the media, is it? You, you tend not to see that that much. I'm not saying so. There's a bit of a situation where you want to be humble in what you do, and I know we won't talk about it now, but you do do charity work. So you're humble to a certain extent because that's part of your your DNA as being mm -hmm. a Sikh. That you, you know, oh, I do I do this, 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 and this. Absolutely. But on 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 the other end, um, should we not be prominent? Um, you mentioned the fact that people should go into the media. Should we not be prominent in places like the United Nations to be able to do what we're good at? Which, which, which is to say, look at the situation in Syria, yes. look at the situation in different countries. Why are we not necessarily, in your view, actually as prominent as we could be? And the media tends to be very quick to position a negative image. And um, you know about the mistaken identity situations in the US, you know, within um, weeks of 9-11, yes. there's this poor chap who owned a petrol station got killed. Right. Um, and he, he's not even any of these terrorist elements. He's, no. he's a Sikh champ no. who, who is everything against terrorism. That's right. right. So, uh, you know, what can we do to better educate people and what can we do to change the media? Do you mm -hmm. have to be in it? To mm -hmm. change it, is that your view? Absolutely, Dr. Saab. My, my opinion is, which is why I say we have to be more present in the media. We have to have more of our communication channels, which is why I think the, the, the Sikh channel and, uh, is a very commendable effort in that, in that direction. Because don't forget, uh, the other media, media are controlled in most countries by certain corporate houses, by certain interest groups. They, they have, I mean, they have every reason to paint us negatively because, you know, you can, because of, because of our appearance, because of the fact that we don't accept oppression, because of our DNA, you know, I mean, Sikhism is not something which will allow you to ex accept injustice without reacting to it, because if you do, then you are denying the Sikh DNA. They have every interest to painting us negatively, because we challenge authority if authority is being oppressive and unjust. Wherever so, so you are. think it's convenient to kind of give, uh, not necessarily give a voice, uh, or actually a sense of reason to come out? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I, um, I've been saying it everywhere. I don't see any reason not to say it now. I mean, we should try and emulate, in a certain sense, the Jewish community. Look, whenever there is a problem, and they also suffer like we do, they are attacked, there is a lot of anti-Semitism, which is again gaining ground, unfortunately, in so many countries. But look at the prominence which is given. Whereas, you know, I, I read in some, I mean, Sikhs are being attacked even today. I think yesterday or day before, a Sikh was attacked in California by two guys shouting insults and all. If at all it's reported, it's on page 17 somewhere at the bottom. If the same thing were to happen to a, to a Jewish person in Paris or somewhere else, it'll be on the front pages. You know? We have to be more present. We have to have our own channels. And slowly, as more and more of our boys and girls start getting pre you know, in the media, I think the others will start waking yeah, but up. But then to they reality. have to be in a position. Just coming back to the point you made before, they have to be in a position where they're able to um, release those stories. Yes. You, what you don't want is a, a group of uh, elitist individuals sitting in a room no, saying, you don't. "Actually, there's ten news headlines. Yes. I like that one, that one, and that one, and that will be in news at, news at ten or news at I mean, nine or whatever." They're true. picking and choosing the stories, it, right? it, it and has, then they'll be repeated across the media, right? It has to go together with an effort also. For lack of a better word, we have to have good lobbyists. You have to lobby, you know, people who are in power. You have to lobby them to present. Or maybe you have to be in power. Maybe maybe you have to be a politician or move move into those. Uh, Look at Canada, ranks. Dr. Look yeah. at Canada. They've there are five, four Sikhs yeah, who are in the federal yeah. cabinet. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure the defence minister is a Sikh chap who, who served in Afghanistan. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and and from what I hear from my Canadian friends, you know, who served in the army, he is well respected. Yeah, he was actually at the UN recently. I think literally about a couple of days ago, uh, he went to see the uh, signing in of the new um, uh, mm -hmm. secretary general, mm -hmm. uh, who's taken over from uh, 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 Wang Ki Moon. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's. Um, Talking about media mm -hmm. and talking about your industry, mm -hmm. a lot of banker bashing has been going on in recent <laughs> years. Now, yes. Nobody seems to talk about an opportunity for bankers to turn around and say, look, we're doing some, you know, I think we, we were talking about it, ethical funds or, you know, some kind of environmental programs. So yes. do you think that the media uh, likes to uh, rile the industry and say, oh, that person over there is earning a million pound bonus, you know, um, they seem to pick their stories. 
Well, the Wolf of Wall Street's a good movie, isn't it? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't particularly like it, but it, it was a pretty bad portrayal of the banking market. Uh, sector, wasn't yes. It? Well, he was not a banker. He was, he, okay. he was a well, securities trader. Everybody else who's looking at that will go, he works in banking, he must be a banker. You That's know? right. Well, actually, uh, a few years ago, you know, I, I had gone to Canada and, and uh, the immigration fellow, he asked me, w w what do you do? And I said, I work in a bank. And he said, hey, so you're a bankster, are you? Bankster. So, so, you know, yeah. a bankster. Yeah. He used the word bankster. Uh, I think one thing is that a large majority, and I know this might raise some sniggers uh, in the audience, I think a very large majority of bankers are good professional people who try and do a good job to the best of their ability. Uh, we've had some bad eggs, but then show me any profession where you haven't had bad eggs. The problem is the bad eggs... Though, sorry to interrupt, that the bad eggs <laughs> have had a ripple effect amongst uh, people in the street. <laughs> yes. you know? and, and I think it's interesting. I was looking... Uh, I actually had an opportunity a few years ago to interview Jesse, uh, uh, Jesse Jackson uh, over in uh, uh, the US, and uh, uh, he, was, he was visiting here. Mm -hmm. And he said that at the time of the peak time of mm -hmm. the banking crisis, mm -hmm. it was very easy for bankers to find it great ways for people to borrow money, but they weren't as creative to actually say, well, man, you've got to pay your money back, mm -hmm. um, but we won't take your house away from you. Mm -hmm. So um, was there, were those stories not there? Was there not enough imagination there to be able to say, actually, we're not going to be so cutthroat because, you know, we need our money back, you know? And, and that ripple effect happened all the way across the world, didn't it, in terms of the crash? You see, that crash was unlike any other crash which had happened earlier. So it was difficult to ex expect people to react in a very specific way to the specific characteristics of that crash. It was generalized, right? It was generalized. Right, yeah. um, having said that, banking offers you opportunities, sometimes more than in some of the other sectors, where you need to have a very strong moral base because the temptations can be fairly large. You have to be able to resist those temptations. And I repeat, I think a grand majority of bankers do resist the temptation and they do a conscientious job, um, which is also important that we need people from all kinds of different backgrounds who should come into banking. You know, we need doctors, we need engineers, we need physicists, we need all kinds of people who should come into banking. What do they bring by having that diversity? They bring um, an outlook, a vision which is different from that of somebody who might have just gone through the finance, finance sector, studied economics or banking studies or something like that. Uh, a doctor, you were mentioning earlier, maybe the bankers should have been less rigid, you know, in expelling people from their houses. Uh, maybe somebody who has a non-banking or a non-financial background might have had more awareness of the social impact of the actions, which though perfectly legal, and expected in the banking world might have a ripple effect which would create more damage than the immediate gain it would bring. Uh -huh. So, and also these days, you know, the... Um, what about working with government and saying, for example, um, we'll, we'll get a loan from the people because, you know, in certain countries it was the government that bailed out a few banks. Uh, and then that, there were creative ways in which that could have, you know, so the bankers could have been involved at that point and said, actually, we're going to get a loan, but over the next five years, we're going to pay it back, or there's, there's kind of dimensions. So there's too much detail, I think, isn't it? I think there is, a, there is a rise of, I mean, the group I work for, the family I work for, they've laid a very strong emphasis on all of us. Uh, we've set up a whole series of what are called ethical funds, you know. The, the, these funds would invest, uh, I'll give you an example, which I think is extremely impressive. We have a fund which invests in the restoration of polluted p terrains wow. in Africa and in other countries, uh, even in the center of Paris, we, we did it for. So these are terrains which have been polluted over decades, if not years. And then we go in, we buy them over from whoever owns them, we restore them through specific... That is where scientific knowledge comes in very handy because the people who are running this fund have knowledge about how to, you know, sort of undo the effects of that pollution over such a long period. They, they can look at part the past and actually try yes. and, you know, understand. Yes, they do. And, and that way our shareholders' family have, uh, they, they, this message is coming across very strongly that we, we don't want to just invest in anything. We want to invest 
in, in, in uh, sectors uh, which have a social impact, which will lead to an amelioration in the quality of life of people in Africa, in India and in other countries. So there is a rising consciousness. There is a rising consciousness. Um, maybe it's not to the extent that it becomes more visible, but it will as time passes. We have even clients who are starting to now ask us that the, 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 the money they, they give us for management or investments should be invested to such and such percentage in some of the ethical funds. Very good. Let, so, let me, because um, we've only got a few minutes left, can you believe? Mm-hmm. Time flies when you're uh, having fun, as was you want to get a fantastic guest. Mm-hmm. Um, if you've got people that are interested, you mentioned that it'd be good for people to move into banking and maybe mm-hmm. move into uh, media, mm-hmm. specifically because this is your subject area. Yes. And you are a perfect example of somebody who has come from one industry mm-hmm. uh, and moved into another one and become yeah. very successful in it. So if somebody's done, say, a pharmacy master's or a physics master's, how can they uh, get into this uh, line of business uh, and become successful in it? I think there are two, two things which I would like to emphasize. There is no quick shortcut. They would have to start as an apprentice or start, you know, at, at the base to, to acquire better knowledge. They should think of, when they apply for such a position, they should present a vision how their specific non-banking sector knowledge can be a help. As I mentioned, somebody who's done pharmaceutical studies, uh, some of the major uh, investments you know, in the banking world are done in pharmaceutical companies. You have some very major pharmaceutical companies in Switzerland, in the US, in India, in other countries. Now, a person with this kind of knowledge in pharmaceuticals would be in a much better position than somebody like me who's never done that to be able to analyze and make better recommendations to his or her clients. Absolutely. So there is, there is an added value. There Absolutely. is an added value which banks are now conscious about acquiring, which is why uh, we have a lot of colleagues who come from different sectors. But what, this person should be prepared to work hard. You know, there is no easy road to quick success. Right. They, would, they should see, they would have to learn how the bank works, what are the strengths of the bank, what are the weaknesses, and then bring their specific sector of knowledge to show to the management how they can reduce those weaknesses. Because again, to to come back to this example, uh, there might be some relatively smaller banks who may not have that much knowledge about the pharmaceutical sector as some of the bigger investment banks. So I would advise this person to rather go for a slightly smaller or less well-known institution as a start, rather than immediately dream of going to one of the big ticket names. Do you think because they can make more of an impact in that that organization? Absolutely. Do you think um, uh, the fact that uh, data data analysis um, and now there's these new fields like data scientist which is more predictive, I mean, are these like behavioral, you know, we talk about big data and all kinds of other stuff, like the amount of retail information we have about consumers today. Is this a growing area for banks to look at? It is. It is absolutely. And, and you know, this is also linked. <laughs> Some of the bigger institutions are now trying to remove the human element. You know, you have the era of robo-advisors, oh, wow. which is now mm-hmm. pointing at the horizon. Uh, I'm convinced that robo-advisors can never eliminate the human contact. The real person. The The real real person. person. I mean, the real person is still the key. But to these people, my message is, uh, please try and go into institutions where your vision will contribute more. Don't immediately dream of the big ticket items. One of the things which has happened in our modern world, you know, with all the technology, the expectations have grown so much that everybody expects to be at the top in a very short time. Right. Well, you, uh, you're going to have to put hard work in. And then I was going to say thank you for uh, picking up the phrase before about real people <laughs> rather than robots. Thank you for being real, uh, to use a, um, a term. Uh, I'd like to say thanks very much, uh, Jogesh Singh. Thank Dr. Jogesh Singh, thanks so much for coming on the show. Uh, we really appreciate his time. We look forward to seeing you next time. Uh, thanks for joining us. If you want to send me an email, you can do that at info at seekchannel.tv. We look forward to seeing you next time. Alright, you go casa, or you go for the